Hi, divers. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. We're going to talk about something today that's been bugging me. I don't know what it is. Maybe somebody out there has an answer. If you have an answer, share it with me, okay? I don't like to think that today's divers are, stoop, are, are not as smart as we used to be the 20, 30, 40, 60 years ago. But anyway, I don't think that's the case at all. In fact, I think probably today's divers are probably a bit a little brighter than we were back then, but that's not the point. Why don't people tell you technical details about your equipment. Let me, let me explain. Years and years ago, when you bought a regulator, here's what you got. Here's an example. Decor. I'm just picking Decor out of the... Decor Dart. This is the owner's manual for a Decor Dart regulator. So you're going to buy your regulator. $39.95 got you one of the best regulators ever made. It really was. It's a fantastic regulator. Single hose. Uh, that was this feature. But it was really good. It breathed really well, and, 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 and it was rugged, and it was beautiful, stainless steel, and everything else. So, take or dart. This is what you got with it in the box. Take or dart. Here you go, sir. Have a good time. So, what's in here? Well, let me explain what's in here, okay? First of all, important stuff. Regulator care. Yes. Tank care. I bought a regulator. Okay, what the heck. No. And then it goes on here. Regulator, maintenance and repair to assemble and the second stage. You don't get that now. You buy a regulator today, it says, if you have a problem, take it directly to your local dive store for a professional service. Okay. To reassemble. Good, good. See how that works? Yeah. <clears throat> disassemble the first stage. What? How many of you have disassembled the first stage of your regulator? Exactly. They sure as heck don't suggest it, and they sure as heck don't give you a guide on how to do it, okay? Now, this is not a service manual. The service manual is much more detailed, you know, this and that and all that kind of stuff. To reassemble first stage. Good thinking. Okay, let's go on. Air leak. Now, this is the tank and the regulator, and air, if there's an air leak, what do you do? It tells you what to do. <clears throat> and then uh, on, on it goes. It tells you a few more things. And then, here's the decor dart. You can see it's quite, nothing special. Very, very nice though. Stainless steel. The second stage, I used one of these years. The second stage was quite gorgeous. The two, the top and the bottom, they were held together by about eight or ten beautiful stainless steel screws with nuts and lock washers. Oh yeah, it was like a it was like an old-fashioned Jaguar. Oh, beautiful thing. Oh, what's this down here? Can you see that? Exactly. This is a parts breakdown. This is the entire regulator broken down into all its individual component parts, all spelled out in correct order. And there's a name besides each one of them. What's this over here? Price. Price. Each of the parts has got a price on it. I know you didn't get that when you got your regulator. You didn't get one of these with it. And then there's, of course, the guarantee. This regulator is guaranteed to 10 feet or 10 minutes, whatever occurs first, whatever it happened to be. But my point is this, there's all the information on that regular, all the technical information, how to service, how to take care of it, how to, if you need a part, how to, everything about it. You don't get that anymore. This is from the, granted, it's from the 60s, mid-60s, okay, the early 60s, but that's not the point. Why don't you do that? Now, look it, look it. In class, in class, okay, when I started teaching scuba in the early 70s, 69, 70, 71, 71 or 72, I started teaching. We had these sheets, okay? Now, we had big ones as well. We had like big poster size sheets to explain how the equipment worked. In this particular example, this is about a valve for a tank and how the reserve mechanism works. Now, some of you are quite new divers. You're like, reserve, what's reserve? I want to get one of those things. Too bad. You can't get them anymore. <clears throat> years and years ago, we used to have a reserve. So when we ran out of air, we could pull a lever. Serious? I'm serious about this. You get left hand, you pull a lever, and you get more air. Sounds like a great idea, huh? Well, you know, we didn't have pressure gauges. We did not have submersible pressure gauges, you see? So we didn't know how much air we had. We knew when we ran out. That was fairly obvious. And then you would pull the lever down, and you got a little bit more, hopefully enough to get you back to the surface safely. Now you have submersible pressure gauge, you actually plan the dive. So the reserve sounds like a good idea, but you know what this does, don't you? The reserve, what's it do? It tells you that you're out of air. I don't want to know I'm out of air. I want to know how much I have. So today it's actually much better. But back then we had a reserve. This tells you how the reserve works. It doesn't tell you how to fix it, but it tells you how to work. On the back, it tells you all about it. Okay? Here, 
This is the first stage. This is a standard piston first stage. Very, very common regulator even today. This is the way it works. This is from Decor. Doesn't matter. They're all very similar. You get an Oceanic or U.S. Divers and, uh, or uh, a Sherwin. All, and they're all the same. If you have a standard, meaning a non-balanced, but a standard first stage, that's what it looks like inside. That's how it works. This is what it looks like before you take a breath. This is what it looks like when you are taking your breath. It shows the airflow through it. You guys have never seen this before. Most of you. Some of you have, I'm sure. Most of you haven't. Okay. Well, suppose you have one of those fancy new balanced first stages. Oh, yeah. Maybe with a swivel on it. Oh, yeah. That'd be great. Well, there it is. That's how it works. Explains all about it. In, out, up, down, left, right, and center. Okay. And look at this. This is a, what is this? Diaphragm balanced first stage. Even better. On it goes. I don't know this is. There's so many different ones. But that's right. Balanced type. Okay. And then here's the second stage. The part that goes in your mouth. You know, this is the second stage. That's how it works. That's what it looks like. That's how it works. Yeah, where, do you, where do you get this? Where do you get this technical stuff? Why don't manufacturers and gear suppliers, why don't they do that today? We used to. Again, let's go back to the 70s. This book is from the 70s. This is the textbook, New Science of Skin and Scuba Diving. You may have seen, I've talked about this some time ago. The New Science of Skin and Scuba Diving. Now, this is the late version. This is the book that I used when I took my course in 1960. 1960. Do the math. But anyway, same book. Different front on it. And there was a bit of different information inside when I took my course. Pardon me, there's nothing in there about single hose regulators because they hadn't been developed yet. They have all two hose regulators and all the neat stuff to do with that. This is updated. Newly revised and enlarged. That was an updated version. This is on the mid-70s. Okay? And, 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 and uh, there's a section in here, as there is in all textbooks, about equipment. And it talks about equipment. And, and I'll just show you a couple of pages. It talks about the diver's flag. Okay? This is just like your textbook. You did this in your book. You notice what's missing? Color. <laughs> yeah, no color. Black and white. Depth gauges now. They work all that kind of neat stuff. And here it talks about knives. Whole page on knives. Knives were a big deal back then. You had to have a knife, a yeah, 12-inch knife if you were a really, really good diver, a 9-inch knife if you were, you know, working on it, and a 6-inch knife if you were new. No, I'm kidding, of course, but knives were a big deal back then. And, and what else is in here? Nothing on those pages of interest, anyway. Tanks, scuba gear, two hose, and full face, and a single hose, you see? And this is all about tank ba backpacks, which we don't use anymore, and so on. So, and this is good here. Oh, oh, look, at there's a picture of that reserve valve all taken apart so they can explain how it works. There's submersible pressure gauge, a whole page on the submersible pressure gauge. Why did they spend so much time, a whole page on the submersible pressure gauge? Because they were new. <laughs> yeah, they were new. New idea, <clears throat> as I just mentioned. And there's some junk. And then, oh, what's this? Look at over here on these pages here. This explains <clears throat> how a downstream valve works and how an upstream valve works. Upstream, downstream. That sounds like we're on an outing uh, on a canoe trip. No, no, no. This, uh, these are technical terms, which most of you divers, if you, uh, if you have just become a diver, if you've been a diver for less than five years, you know what an upstream valve and a downstream valve is. Divers that I trained in the 70s, they knew an upstream valve from a downstream valve. They could draw a picture of it, and they knew the benefits and disadvantages of each. That's the way it was done back then. Now, there's a, oh, a two-hose regulator. Again, did that bang on your microphone, uh, Kevin? Uh, again, two-hose regulator, all broken apart, showing all the bits and pieces and parts. There it is. Look at so e even in the manual that new divers, you new scientists can excuse me, I mean, for new divers, even in the manuals back then, all that technical information is in there. Tells all about how it works. Why doesn't it do that today? I don't know for sure. I have some ideas. Modern society is not geared to that anymore. We're much more geared to <clears throat> how do you get onto Instagram? How, how do I reply to all people at once? That's the new technical information. But back in the old days, certainly in scuba diving and automobiles as well. It's the same thing in automobiles and, and a lot of different things we had. You actually learned how things worked, how to fix them as well. They don't do that anymore. I find it pretty interesting, particularly in a sport where equipment is very important. Yeah, think about it for a minute. Scuba diving is an equipment intensive sport. If it wasn't for equipment, we wouldn't be scuba diving. There wouldn't be scuba diving. And yet, in, this, in, in modern society, let's call it in the, in the 2000s, okay, 
all of that technical information is gone. You don't take care of your own stuff anymore. You take it to your dad's door. Not bad. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's kind of strange to me that new divers and even advanced divers don't learn the techniques, the technical information, how it works, why it works, and how to fix it and so on. I think it's too bad. Now, a lot of you are not technically inclined and you probably don't think it's too bad. But I know a lot of you are technically inclined because I've been getting comments about this. You know, tell me about this. How do I fix that? And that's why we're doing a lot of, Kevin and I are doing a lot of these videos on here to show you that stuff that used to be common knowledge. Yeah, you know, the stuff that we're doing on these videos, an awful lot of it was, in fact, day-to-day -day knowledge. Brand new divers, just, you know, with their seat card still warm from the laminator. No, no, they didn't laminate them. They were made of cardboard. But anyway, brand new divers knew a lot of the stuff that we were doing on these videos that you think is so interesting. I think it's interesting, too. But there's a question that pops up in my mind quite often. Why isn't that in there? And I don't know. There's, there's reasons, I'm sure. Maybe liability. Other manufacturers aren't doing it. Why should they? Maybe they're trying to support I don't know. There's a lot of, I can probably give you half a dozen reasons why textbooks and new divers today are not given much technical information about the equipment. You know, here's a regulator. Put it on here, turn the valve, stick it in your mouth, suck in and out. End of story. I, I miss it. I think it was really neat. I used to really enjoy it. I'm technically inclined. Anyway, just a small rant on my part. A couple of things here to show you. Old textbook, some of these old technical charts we used to have, and an old owner's manual. Check that owner's manual compared to yours. I bet you say, yours says, rinse it. Take it to the dive store every two years. See if I'm right. Anyway, good ranting at you for a couple of minutes. Maybe there was something in this or in there that piqued your interest. Talk to you real soon. Alec Pierce from Vintage Scuba.